Hey, I'm Anfa. I think I found the best free Hall Reaver plugin ever. Check this out. I'm testing the reverb to see how it sounds. I'm testing it. I'm testing the reverb. How does it sound? I'm testing the reverb to see how it sounds. I'm testing it. I'm testing the reverb. How does it sound? So the plugin is called Dragonfly Hall Reverb and recently the project has been updated and it's now two plugins. It's Dragonfly Hall Reverb and Dragonfly Room Reverb. I haven't used the Room one because it's pretty new and I just didn't have time and I discovered this yesterday. But uh, I've been using Dragonfly Hall Reverb for a few months pretty much exclusively for all reverb needs because it's freaking awesome. So I'm gonna maybe use the snare first and we're gonna just listen a bit to what this reverb sounds like, what it can do. Okay, so here's our snare without the reverb. It has a tail on its own, now with the reverb. Mm, let's let's just take a look at this uh, interface. So what we have here is a few sections. The first one is the presets. We have from smaller to bigger. and really big uh, simulated rooms. And this is not even the biggest this reverb can do. Like the biggest this reverb can do is... a freaking cathedral times five. Now I think this sounds pretty much like a real cathedral. So I think that saying this is just hall reverb is a pretty, pretty tiny understatement because for me this is a freaking universal reverb unit. And a few things I really love about it is one is this spectrogram here, which shows you the frequency and over time response of your reverb, which is, well, super useful also we can we can automate some parameters without any glitches of course the size if we change the size it's gonna reset the the reverb tail because that's completely changing the way the reverb is calculated so it it, it it's impossible to you know keep going after that but all the other ones... Well, that's pretty... pretty improbable. Okay, so let's maybe mute the dry level, which is the unprocessed sound. Now, what, what else we have here is early level, which is early reflections. And these are controlled with the pre-delay and size. And I think width too. Yeah. Now, then we have the late level, which is the tail itself. So that's kind of the main the main dish of a reverb unit, I guess. And I think that early sand 
is inserting because by default the late level is is calculated from the dry level but with early send you can also have wait a minute but with this early send i think it's also being made from the early reflections as well Yeah, I think it's like reinforcing the tail with the early reflections. That's the most reverb you can get. All right, so about the tail, well, of course the size of the simulator room is an important part, but also the decay time. <laughs> That's pretty nice. Without it, and with it. I like that. And also there's diffuse. And there's this. I think this is like creating kind of a chorusing effect in the tail. And this. I, I hear like a little flutter in there. I think these are all affecting a chorus that is being applied to the signal. Probably to fill in, you know, the frequency spectrum to make the reverb like non make it smoother. But I think you need to be like probably going for 100% of the modulation is not the best thing you can do because that's not subtle and this should be subtle like unless you're going for some weird effects because weird effects are cool. Another reason why I really like this reverb is because it's really configurable and actually the most useful thing is this section here. Because this reverb operates on three bands. Like you have three frequency bands. The first thing is the medium band, which you control with the size and that in decay. So if I set the high multiplier to one, and low multiplier to one. Now, like this, this whole reverb <laughs> frequency response is pretty uniform. And this is controlled by this decay. So if I go to one second, you can see that it's like, <laughs> it's going to nothing around one and now four seconds, which is what you'd expect. But now, if I set the high multiplier to 0.20, then something, something, then the high frequencies here are around one second, decaying around one second, and the rest is decaying around four seconds. And the cool thing is, like, we have crossover filters, filters, so I can change where the high band is starting. So if I move this all the way down, the high band is from one kilohertz up, below is mid, and below 500 hertz, it's low band. So if I make the low band shorter, you can see that here, be below 500 hertz, we're again shorter, 0.5, so we should be like two seconds. This was four seconds. Because we have a little very low margin, if I move this up, like my, my high cross to 3K, uh, yeah, now it actually, the mid band around 1K, it actually going to decay for four seconds. I love the sound. That's so cool. I love it. I, oh, this is so good. I, oh. I don't know. I ah, this is like ah, awesome. I love it. So the rule of thumb is a realistic reverb is going to have the high frequencies decay faster than the low frequencies because that's just how sound works. So it's 
if, if we click around some presets, you see that pretty much almost all of them have high frequencies decaying faster than low frequencies. However, if you want to use this reverb for, say, bass or kick, which I did in this uh, track, you want to use the low cut, which is removing low frequencies. And you can also, you know, use this low cross and make the lows really, really, really short. So, yeah. Okay, so um, maybe let's... Uh, go and take a look at some other instruments I used this reverb for, because I use it on every single track in this track. Here it is on kick. Now this is the kick without the reverb. Pretty dry, now with the reverb. Let's listen to just the reverb. So you can hear there's early reflections and also tail. So this is like this room impression and then a little bit of the tail. It's too much. Yeah, so also as you can see I've used this low cut to remove the low frequencies as much as possible without it. It's a little bit boomy, not too much, but still. And also make the low frequencies shorter. Because I really don't want this boominess. You can hear now the low frequencies are rumbling on. And this is not good for kicks or snares because kicks, snares, basses, because that's gonna really muddy the low frequencies and like prevent anything from being punchy in there. Because all of that energy is going to just clutter the whole thing. So I use the slow cut and then also shorten the low band decay time. And what I have is a reverb that's pretty much mid-range, which is pretty cool. There's also hi-hat. Let's Let's listen to the hi-hat first without the reverb. And now with the reverb. Now just the reverb. You can hear it's a, it's a pretty subtle room. Just to give it a little, a little like space, make it not feel like something completely in a vacuum, right? Okay, let's go and take a look at the bass. The bass is an electric bass recorded from line. Let's listen first to the dry signal. Now with the reverb. Yeah, so you can see it's also pretty much mid-range. I've, of course, removed all the lows I could because without that, the bass becomes really unreadable. Sometimes I wish this low cuts filter was a little bit more steep, but actually if I use it also with the low multiplier and just tune the low cross, I don't hear much problems. Like, it doesn't create mud. At least I can hear it. Yep. So, bass can have some reverb too. And now there's the piano track. Without the reverb. and with reverb. Just the reverb. And 
there's also lead vocal. Hum, 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 hum. I'm testing the reverb. I'm testing the reverb. Uh, sorry, the pitch isn't perfect, but well, gotta leave with it. And also, there's the chorus or choir. I don't know. Yeah, let's bypass it. Hi. You see, this one is pretty dark. I probably should have added the EQ to remove something like everything below 200 hertz. Or maybe just do this. I should have done this because uh, it could have been affecting the bass frequencies and probably muddying the lows a bit. And the last thing is the boom. Let's listen first without reverb. So that's kind of like a cinematic boom. I I wanted to have something that would feel like a I don't know maybe an orchestral bass drum kinda. And then with the reverb, it sounds somewhere between an ex like an explosion and and a really big drum. I really love how this reverb elevates the sound of this. So that's Dragonfly Hall Reverb. I hope this video was useful and that you'll find this plugin useful too, because I sure do. It's available for Linux, Mac and Windows in VST and LV2 format, so you can pretty much use it in every decent DAW in existence. Take that, Pro Tools! I'm probably gonna take a look at the other plugin they made, the Dragonfly Room Reverb, because I expect it's pretty kick-ass also. Okay, that's all for today. Thanks for watching. I hope this video was worth your time. I also want to thank all the fine people who support my work financially. If you'd like to join them and help keep this show going, please go to patreon.com slash anfa or liberapay.com slash anfa. Now go and make some music.